everybody, it's your girl Bunny Wu-Tang in American Saga, episode two, Winter Wars. The recap and the review, that's all coming up next. The opening scene, we see Bobby and Dennis, you know, they doing what they do, slanging them things, and they see some kids playing, and then while the kids are playing, Dennis goes to the side and gives one of the little kids some money, and Bobby looks at him like, okay, so what was that all about? He was like, I need some ears and eyes on the street, because I'm still looking for shy, you know, and I'm thinking, okay, he getting his Game of Thrones on, trying to have little birdies in the street, because he was serious about killing shy. He's still stuck on that so we cut to the next scene we got Sha and power they're in the car they're looking at a guy scoping him kind of far off looking at him as he walks along and when he gets closer to a building he goes to the door and they're like okay that's the cue that we can go in they go in and they talk to a supplier you could tell they're talking to a supplier because he's in the office in one room they got people cooking up stuff in another room they got people slanging them things another room you got just random stuff happening throughout this building so when they sit down they talk to the supplier they do what they can and the supplier says you know what Sha, I just wanted to know you and Bobby y'all still doing that music he was like you know a little something you know we still working on it and in the midst of them talking to the supplier we have Bobby and Dennis they're making their way to this same building keep in mind that Sha and Dennis they still want to kill each other they walk up to the door and the men they pat them down and he pats Dennis down, and he's like, man, you got this big Uzi in here. What did what, what you think he was going to do with that? He's like, well, you know, I don't know. I just got it in there for protection. They pat them down like, man, y'all don't know what to do with that, and tell them to go on. As they're proceeding to the main office where Shy <laughs> and Power are, they barely cross paths. They switch paths because when they go into the room, Shy and Power, they're gone. They've left the room. So the supplier says to Dennis, Okay, y'all are here, what do y'all want? Because, you know, Divine, he's in jail. So whatever y'all trying to tell me, I don't want to hear it because Divine's in jail. That's his business and mine. So what do y'all want? He says, well, you know, Divine's jail right now. This is Dennis talking. Divine's in jail right now. So we want to know what we can do to pay you because we trying to keep business going while Divine is still in jail. And Bobby, he says politely, we just, we're just trying to keep stuff going. We want to buy some more. We want to re-up. That's why we're here. So Dennis, he goes into this bag and he's like, boom, there's 7K right there, 17K right there. And the supplier was like, well, that was Divine's price. You know, that was his price. That's all gravy, but you know, y'all have an additional new member, uh, membership payment of another G. So they go into their pockets and they pulling out more money and he gives him another G. And the supplier just looks around like, Y'all sure y'all want to do this? Y'all sure y'all want a cake that I'm about to give y'all? And he says, you know what? Get these young brothers a, a cake, you know? And he gives them that look like you have no idea what you about to get yourself into. Supplier also tells Bobby, look, you do music, right? I heard you're really good. Like, why are you doing this? You should keep your mind in your music because what's the point of locking up a songbird? You can't hear a bird's true potential and the true song locked up and Bobby just gives him that look like you got a good point but I really don't have much of a choice here Bobby tells everybody else like look I found a nice house it's abandoned nobody's ever really been in there this is a good place for us to hide and stash stuff and deal from and you know Dennis is just like man this is a good spot like how did you find this and he says I saw this house abandoned and it's been abandoned for a while I always pass it going to the music shop so they're starting to stash stuff and place stuff everywhere and Dennis just proceeds to put it's just a whole lot of money and and a lot of the product 
visibly in the floorboard just covered by a board and Bobby's like do you think that's a good idea to just put all of our supply and all of our stash in one spot and Dennis is like look if you want to have it in all 50 different locations like Divine did you're more than welcome to I don't feel like trying to find all these different locations so I'm gonna keep it right here it's already a bad sign already and you could see it's big foreshadowing to something terrible Bobby gets home and is waiting on Divine's call from jail. And as soon as Divine calls, Bobby's on the phone with him. And he wants to ask him so many questions. And Divine is like, look, the questions that you're answering, that you're asking me now, I can't answer those in jail. Like, they listening. I can't watch what you say. In the meantime, just take care of business. Just remember this. I'm in jail, okay? You grow up and you be a man for once and make some decisions without me. I can't keep making decisions for you. So I'm in here. You hold stuff down out there because you asking all these questions and I can't answer them. Don't ask anybody else. Make the judgment on your own. Finally see Clifford again. He's in the basement with Bobby and Bobby is playing some tracks and Clifford is spitting over him and he's looking at his notepad and he's finally getting uh, some energy going. And Bobby says, just stop, man. He stops the track and Clifford's like, okay, what's the deal, man? We was, we was, we was on to something. That sounded real good. He was like, yeah, this is a nice track, but... I need a good sample over this because the beat that we got now is just the same thing over and over again. I really need this SP-1200. And Cliff was like, oh, SP what? He's like, don't worry about it, man. You, you don't know what I want. It's, it's okay. Right, let's just stop. So when he stops, we got Sha that walks in. And Sha walks in. He was like, hey, man, you know, I heard you. That you the dude that be you spitting. I heard your stuff, man. You know, you be talking to the ladies and everything. And that's all good, but, you know, my, my lyrics is for the streets, you know. And Cliff is just like, you know, whatever, man. That's your style. I got mine. I spit some real stuff, too. I just like to sprinkle it up and change it up. And you're not, you're not really versatile with yours. And he's like, I, you know, I'll switch it up, too. And Bobby like, okay, everybody just chill out, man. So Cliff says, I'm out. I'll be back later on when he's not here. So Clifford leaves, and we got Shy and Bobby in the basement. And Shy is like, you know, I'll come back and do some music soon, but I need, I, I need what I gave you to stash. And Bobby is just like, well, you know, I, I ain't got it. So Shy like, okay, well, where's my, where's my gun at? Cause that's we stashed it here. Where else could it be? And he's like, well, you know, um, you know, Dennis found it and he, and he got it. Sha says, so you mean to tell me that Dennis got it? And he's like, look, he, he found it. I was telling him to look for something. He went into one of the crates. He found the gun. It's not my fault. Also, he doesn't know who that belongs to. He thought it was mine. So you good. Like, calm down. And, you know, Sha is just not too happy about that. Bobby goes to Divine's girlfriend's house. And remember, Divine goes to his girlfriend's house to stash the money that he's been collecting on the street in a safe. So Bobby goes in there, he's trying to open the safe and he's just like, ah. he's trying to remember the code. And the girlfriend says, oh, that's okay, move, I got it. And she just puts in, in the code and the safe just opens. Mm, red flag, that's not good. It's not good that you know the code to the safe because Divine was under the impression that she did not know the code to the safe clearly she does so bobby puts money in there and as he's putting the money in there she says so what's the deal with getting him out like why haven't we got a lawyer yet why haven't we bailed him out and bobby's just like look we trying to save up more money we don't want to spend everything that we have she's just like whatever so he closes the safe we then move to a scene where we have dennis and Jason, they're in a car trying to peep out where Sha is because word around town, Sha goes to church with his mom and dad and we could just bust him up when he gets out of church. So they waiting on him when he gets out of church. They see Sha's mom and dad enter and they also see a brother pull up. He's in a nice Jeep. He got jewelry and leather and he got this girl that Jason's just, just so in awe with. He just wants her so bad. And he tells Dennis, yeah, man, I, I, I've been trying to get at her, but she ain't giving me no play. And Dennis is just like, you said who? You trying to get at her? She the type of girl that like dudes like that. Us on the street, 
just just hustling doing what we doing is nothing she likes the heavy hitters like him so good luck trying to holler at her and jason's just like mm, how much you think that chain costs that he got on how much you think that that jeep is he's like man i, I don't know but we we supposed to be looking for shot later on that evening we see the same guy jason saw on the street the one with all the money and the chains and the nice car he's having sex with his girlfriend he has a camera set up and he's taping themselves having sex so we then see somebody barge in and say put your hands up give me your chain and give me your money and we automatically recognize that voice and we see that somebody's trying to pull a, a, a cap over their face and disguise it but there's a big fro <laughs> at the top clearly the audience we know that that's jason okay he knocks over the camera he's telling me give me your money now and the girl, too, you go in your purse and you give me the money, too. And I'm automatically thinking, not a good idea to try to do this and there's a camera in the room. Not a good look. Dude gives him his money while he's standing there butt naked looking at him like, oh, if I catch you in the streets, he's giving him that look. And he's so calm and serene, not even scared. And I'm just like, wow, Jason, did you not consider that you robbing a head honcho on the block. You robbing somebody that's clearly got a lot of pull on the streets. Not thinking. Dennis and his friend with the crazy braids, who we know who that is, Wu-Tang fans know who that is, but for the new people, I'm not gonna say the names until we're introduced to the government names in the series because I want you to grow with the series, learning everybody, so I'm gonna keep describing the people that they have not told the names yet okay so if you watch the intro video you'll understand why i why i'm recapping the way that i am but anyway dennis and his friend with the crazy braids they go to the trap house to check up on everybody and they see their friend pass that on the couch and they be black and there's an empty crack vial with him on the couch and he's like man i told you that boy be smoking this i told you that he was on it wake him up and the man with the crazy bread says good morning vietnam wake up he wakes him up and dude was like well, what's what's up man y'all waking me up he's like so so you've been smoking our stash like you've been you've been smoking the supply he's like no nah, I, I just i just fell asleep man y'all got me in here all day i'm sleepy so you got dennis roughing them up and kicking them and telling them not to do this certain stuff he gets a lighter and lights his half of his beard on fire and that dude with the braids just looking at him like oh i might as well just start pouring alcohol on me like man calm down dude you know that might cause a fire like you know stop so they stop whooping his mm, and they say man you know what get out i can't believe you've been doing this man you, you you actually doing what we thought you were doing but now you proved it to me we, we gonna make sure that we let everybody know that you don't need to be in here the jamaican dude he's looking at the tape at his apartment trying to get clues of who just robbed him and then he notices jason's shoes so jason is known for always having very specific shoes and nice designs on his shoes and everybody wants to know where he gets his shoes even dennis wanted to know but he never told him because he's like man you know i got a specific person who make my shoes so i ain't gonna tell you so we know that now the guy knows that it's jason that robbed him we then cut back to bobby he takes a little bit out of the stash because you know everybody has been rewarding themselves with a little cash here and there so instead of splurging on new clothes and shoes and chains like everybody else bobby is thinking about one thing and one thing only and that is that sp 1200 drumming machine so he goes to the music store and he notices a guy that walks in the store and he has stacks of just music items and supplies and sp 1200s and keyboards and stereos and he's looking at this brother get out of the store like wow i can't believe he was able to buy all that and he goes to the front desk and he tells the store clerk i want that sp 1200 i got the money right here and the store clerk tells him hey bobby i'm sorry man you know we sold out bobby's like wait what you know what, what you mean and he tells him I'm, I'm sorry man we sold out there's nothing i could do about it and he hails his head down and he walks out the store and the, almost walks out the store and the store clerk says hey the only one we have left is the floor model that everybody's been messing with and playing with it's not brand new but i can sell you that one and it'd be at the same price like it's brand new he thinks about it like all right, man, I buy it. He was like, oh, and one more thing. If you buy the floor model, 
there's no instruction manual. In no way is he thinking, wow, okay, this is a new item that nobody's ever used and you're still considering it without the instruction manual. And because he is so determined to get this machine, he slams that money down on that counter and he makes that purchase anyway. You got shy and power, they at they spot cooking it up, you know, doing what they gotta do. And he says, man, you know, I heard that them park people, you know what I'm saying, that they, they, they slanging that thing like McDonald's, you know, they got the clockwork and they selling it. And, and Powell's like, yeah, it's definitely something going on. It's something going on that they able to sell the way they selling, even with the divine locked up, so something ain't right. So one of their partners tell them, hey man, it's somebody at the front, they wanna talk to you. So they come back out front, and who is it? It is B Black. He is there ready to snitch. And he's telling them not only the location of where the trap house is, but also what they've been doing, where the stash at, what they got. And he also says, hey man, Power says to B Black, what happened to the side of your face? And he's like, Dennis did this. You know, he burned my face. So they're like, oh, okay. They like to play with fire, huh? All right. Then you got. Bobby and Clifford, you know, they in the basement working on stuff. He's playing around with the SP-1200, and we just hear a beat. We hear the beat, and we hear it. Doom, ooh, ooh, and he's trying to figure out what's missing. And then you got your boy Clifford. He's trying to groove to it, and he's mumbling. He's like, all right, that sounds good. He's like, stop. We missing something. They're like, I know what we missing. We missing shy. We need shy on this because he can give it that little dabble what we need. And he's like, all right. And he's like, let me call shy. So Bobby calls shy and he's calling the house and he's being very respectable to the father. He's like, hi, you know, is shy there? And his dad tells him like, he's not here. He hasn't been here for over a month. And, you know, of course, Bobby just like, man, over a month? And he's like, yeah, I told my son that if he didn't get a job, he needed a real job. And if he didn't have a job, then he would have to leave. And he can't keep doing whatever it is that he's doing, coming in here all wee hours of the night. So Bobby says, thank you, sir. Just want to know who, where he was. Thank you. I'll talk to you later. You got Dennis. And Bobby's little sister still kicking it. Dennis, he's invited her to this nice dinner at this upscale place, clearly out the hood because they the only black people up in there. And she tells him, do you think this is a good idea that we're way out here? And he was like, look, these people ain't looking at us because we black. The only color that, that matters out this way is green. We got the green and they looking at us because we giving them the green. So don't worry about that. He proceeds to give her a nice Nefertiti chain. And he's like, you just like Nefertiti. Nefertiti was so beautiful. And he's given her a gift. And they are in knee deep into each other. Okay. You got Sha and Power. They are watching the trap house that Dennis and Bobby got. And they're like, man, they, they, they making it look like a little McDonald's up in here. Like, they really got people coming in like clockwork. The fiends are just coming in and out, in and out like a business. And he's like, oh, yeah, 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 we're going to have to stop this. And while they watching the house, they see Dennis get out of a taxi and shout like, oh, there he go right there. Let me just, I don't have my gag, but do you got something in the back seat? I could take him out right now. Power like, no, 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 no. We not gonna just take him out. We gotta shut the whole business down. What we gonna do is we gonna burn this down. We gonna burn it down right now. We gonna shut down the whole business. And Sha, he has that look. Cause don't forget, even though he got some hatred for Dennis, it's still other people in that house that he cool with. He cool with Bobby. Cause he doing music with Bobby. And he's a little reluctant and saying, uh, 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 you know, all right, cool. So Power gets out the car. He got other people behind him that him pulled up to help him out. And he's trying to get on his cell phone and page Bobby to let him know, hey, we got some people about to throw some fire cocktails at the bit out the building. But Bobby has his headphones on, listening to the music that him and Clifford were working on. And he's just trying to put stuff together in his head while his pager is on the table just shaking it up. He doesn't hear anything. So they get out. Power gets out. Shy gets out. They got the cocktails ready to throw them. Everybody else starts throwing them at the building. And the only one that hasn't thrown their fire cocktail yet is Shy. And he's looking at it. And he's thinking and debating like, man, should I throw this? 
And Power says, hey, man, snap out of it. You know, come on, what you waiting on? Throw it. And he just hesitates just a little bit more, but then he throws the cocktail, and it's just engulfed in flames, and the flames are coming up. And Dennis comes in like, hey, man, it's just a fire. And, and Bobby, you know, he, he gets out of it. He takes his headphones off, and it's fire everywhere. Not even thinking about anything else. Who else is in there? They trying to get out the building, and gladly, we got Bobby and Dennis and a few other people. They get out of the fire safely. And then Dennis says, wait a minute, hold up. Anybody get the stash? Anybody get the money? And they coughing like, oh, no, man, I, I didn't have time to get it. And everybody else losing their mind because the stash and the money is gone. Like, it's, it's burning right in front of them, and they can see it just burning just down. And everybody mad and pissed off, and they starting to run off, and Bobby just standing there like, oh, dang, my music. <laughs> my music. Oh, he like, dang. <laughs> and you got to remember, he had what they worked on for so long. Him trying to figure out the drum machine. And they probably had take after take after take. And the tape is burned. Like, it's in there burning to a crisp. When that happened, just a side note, that reminded me of the episode of Martin. When Martin was sick and Gina was trying to get the project together and she had the paperwork in her hand and you know, they were supposed to be warming up Martin some soup. And uh, in the midst of her writing her report, she like, baby, you know, don't bother me. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get my report together. I got your soup in there, baby, it's okay. I'm warming up your soup. And then Cole comes in there and spills the soup all everywhere. And Gina's like, oh, my report, oh my God. And then Martin was like, man, my soup. <laughs> nothing to do with this review <laughs> but that's the first thing I thought about but anyway <laughs> Bobby was just so distraught because everybody else thinking about money they thinking about the stash they thinking about the product and he was thinking about that tape he was thinking about how much work he done put in for that music and Clifford putting down them verses he was thinking about that <laughs> Divine eventually finds out in jail about the bad news, and it is bad news that the stash is burned and that the money is burned. We also have power. He tells Shy, you know, um, I found out something about you, man. Shy's worried, like, oh, like, what could he possibly know? Like, hoping he doesn't find out how close he is really to the people that's perceived that he want to kill. And he's telling him, like, I heard that you homeless, basically, and that you don't have anywhere to stay. So he takes him to this apartment. He opens it up. It's a TV in there. It's a nice bed. It looks very comforting and way different from what he's used to with sleeping on a rooftop, being homeless. And he's like, nah, for real, this mine? He's like, yeah, man, it's yours. You know, I can't have people that's with me, you know, sleeping on the ground or being homeless, so here you go. But there's only one catch. He opens another side door, and it's a place where they do re-ups, and they let people in to smoke and all this stuff. So, so it's somewhere for him to live, but he's still caught up in the mess. So it's somewhere to live, but there's a big catch. He's intertwined with power and the whole establishment, and it really ain't no way for him to get out of it. He has that look on his face like, dang, I should have sleeping on the rooftop is better than this. So we got Jason. He goes to the barbecue place where Bobby's mom uh, works. And he walks in there and he's just gloating and he's wearing the chains that he just took clearly from somebody that's got a little pool in the hood. But he don't care. He's not trying to hide. He's just walking in, talking to people. He even makes some jokes uh, to the owners, the Italians that are sitting at the table reciting lines uh, uh, from the Godfather. And he's just like, oh, I'm here. Did you pick up my order? And then, no, you're making an offer that you can't refuse. And they're giggling and they laugh. And one of the brothers is just like, Italian brothers is like, hey, who is this guy? And the guy who owns the, the food joint, he's just like, oh, he's just a kid. He's joking. He's a real fun guy. Just leave him alone. We cut to Bobby. He goes to the music store, puts the SB1200 on the counter. He's like, I need a refund. And the store owner is looking at him like, is there something wrong with it? And he's just like, nah, I just need to make the return. And he says it in a way like, 
why do I even try? I, you know, I got this, this drummer machine and what's the point? You know, he has that tone of, let me just take this stuff back and let me get my money back. So he's watching God put it back on the store display and hooking up all the connections. So he makes a call to his mother while she's at work. The mother answers the phone at the restaurant and she says, hey, you know, Bobby, I know you're calling me, but you know, Larry doesn't like it when I answer personal calls at work. He's like, I, I know. I'll make it quick. I just want to let you know I got some extra money and I'm going to do what I have to do. I'm going to grow up a little bit more and we're going to get a lawyer for Divine and everything's going to be okay. And she's like, okay, that's fine. That's great, baby. But then you hear, ka, 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 pa, pa. and we see Jason get gunned down by some people in the van who have got out, made it a mission to kill him take the chains off that he stole and drive off and everybody in the restaurant is in shock including bobby's mom and even the italian gentleman that he was joking with so that's the end of the episode and jason is killed it was a quick and straight to the point episode you could tell they're trying to speed it up just a smidge with learning who the characters are and building the crescendo of this hope being diminished and we're going into tra transition of okay what's going to happen that's going to spark some type of um hope or inspiration to bobby who's serious about the music one critique about the episode that i didn't like keep in mind that the writers changed throughout this series but one thing that i did not like was some of the cartoon illustrations that, that they had in this episode i didn't like that it kind of pulled me out of the experience unlike the first episode i get that they were trying to make an illustration about how they were making the money and making it come up and how things were changing but i really didn't like that it made it seem a little disney channel ish and i didn't like how they made me forget the style that I saw that was in the first episode, it made it feel like you couldn't take it seriously and that this wasn't a journey that was in the hood. Like they were making it seem a little bit too bubbly. It ain't nothing bubbly about growing up in the ghetto. And when they made that illustration, I did not like it. That is my only critique about this episode so far. And the writing in the episode, it seemed a little... It just seemed a little popish and it didn't seem like it was the writing was pulling out the true talent of the actors you can tell the difference between one and two you can really see um, how the actors through the writing were able to just show their talents in the second episode it was kind of watered down by um, rushed dialogue where I feel like they could have really taken their time a little bit more big big kudos to Shamik and Ashton for really taking the time to learn their character. The way that Ashton mimics the, the body language and the facial expression and the very doll-eyed um, mannerisms that Bobby makes so on point, the way he does his voice, the way he holds his head, absolutely perfect. Shamik also with <laughs> doing that crooked mouth over the goals and, and changing his voice, really really love that you could tell they watched hours and hours of how to mimic these individuals in real life so it was kind of like an okay episode and you could tell they're trying to speed it up just a little bit but i did not like once again the cartoon illustration that they embedded in this episode i hope that i don't see that in episode three because i didn't like it let me know what you think subscribe hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts comment and also follow me on instagram same profile name official bun underscore e